Hello everybody, uh, we are back and we're going to be talking about words of knowledge and um, it's another one of my favorite topics, things to talk about. Uh, we've just seen God just do amazing things uh, through words of knowledge and impact people's lives that uh, weren't open for the gospel, weren't open for healing, weren't open for for a number of things and as we've been able to begin sharing about God's heart for people. It's it's impacted them to the core and it makes a huge difference. It, it, it opens the door for the gospel. It opens the door for truth. It opens the door for God's promises and so much more. So let's talk about Words of knowledge for a second, okay? So a word of knowledge is basically when God tells you something, there's no way possible that you would know otherwise. It would have to be God telling you, okay? If it's not God telling you, then, um, yeah, you're going to be way off, right? That's one of the signs of a false prophet is that they are off. They, they just isn't, it's not true, right? And so thank God he doesn't say to stone uh, false prophets today. Uh, we would be pretty thin in our ranks, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And the the main thing is it it also gives grace to us. It helps us to grow in it and learn it and, you know, get back up and do it again and get back up and do it again if we fall, if we fail. And it's not kicking ourselves while we're down, right? But it's getting back up and, and pushing forward and moving forward again. So this is the verse I have for you today. And it's 1 John 2.27. It says, But the anointing that you have received from him abides in you. And you have no need that anyone should teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. So when you begin to realize what a word of knowledge is and, and how it impacts and, and what it does, it it's very powerful. It's extremely powerful. We, we can look through Jesus' life and we can see on a regular basis how he operated in words of knowledge. And it's it's simply amazing because God is letting you see into people's lives. He He's giving you an insight into people's lives that allows you to speak to them where they're at and when you step into this it's scary okay I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you I can tell you um, when I began doing this and even now yeah I, I, I even go that far even now there's a part of me is like oh okay God like what, what do you want me to say you know and so you'll find that there's there's three time three different things that happens when you ask God about someone in particular. He'll either tell you in your mind through uh, thoughts. Um, He'll he'll speak directly to you or he'll give you pictures or he'll give you an impression or he'll give something beforehand. Okay? And then there's another time when he doesn't say anything at all or at least you don't think he is. And you're just quiet. Right? You, You just hear crickets. That's all you hear. And God just wants you to open your mouth and start speaking. And then you begin prophesying or giving a word of knowledge, right? And and then there's another time when you need to prime the pump. You need to begin quoting scripture. And as you're quoting the scripture, it starts stirring the spirit of God in you. And all of a sudden, it starts, everything starts coming out. And those are beautiful times, beautiful times I've had with, with, with God. And so, I want to share some of my experiences in, in walking this out and and give you some little exercises and even challenge you a little bit to uh, things that you can do to, to just put yourself out there, right? And it's, it's really simple. It's all about surrender. You decide within yourself to completely surrender to God. You, you just decide to surrender to him. God, this is your mouth. 
I'm your mouthpiece. You can, you can, you, you know, you work through these hands, you can work through this mouth. And so, when I made this decision, uh, it was one of the first times we, we began, um, now understand, like, of course, since I've been born again, made the decision to just, con- to surrender to God. But it's something that we have to do on a regular basis, right? And so I kind of put prophecy to the back, um, to the back of the bus when I was looking at healing and, and walking it out and stuff. And so God brought it all back up, you know, a lot of the trips that we've taken. And he has me actually do different exercises with people. And I begin to, um, the, uh, yeah. Great, great uh, point, Tom. And and so basically, um, we do exercise with people. We challenge them. We push them to prophesy. Uh, Romina has been on our team, uh, and Doris has been through some of the trainings we've done. And I know that you know they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we put them on the spot to prophesy, and then we prophesy over them. And so words of knowledge come out frequently. Um, And what's funny is it's gotten to the point now where I have random people, just brothers and sisters in Christ, they'll just shoot me a text message and say, I I just need some confirmation. And I'm like, really? (laughs) You don't have anybody else? (laughs) I'm just being honest, okay? (laughs) And I'm like, okay, God, like, (laughs) what do you want to say? What What do you want to do here? And all of a sudden, God just starts going, boom, boom. And sometimes she didn't tell me anything. And this happened with one of my close friends from San Antonio. He says, I need a word. I need a specific word, and I need it pretty, uh, it's time sensitive. I need it pretty quick. I said, okay. So I went to God, and God says, you need to tell him this, you need to tell him this. I said, okay. But as I was talking to him on the phone, because I called him back, I was talking to him on the phone, I'm telling him, this is everything that God told me. And he shared with me. And all of a sudden, boom, I start seeing a third section. Um, so I dealt with his his ministry life. I dealt with his business life. And then now God was telling me to focus on his relationship life. And I'm like, I don't really like touch that section. You know, <laughs> I don't want to be blamed for anything. And um, as basically God just started speaking through me and, and everything. Um, And it was funny because about a week later, I'm on Instagram and I'm um, looking through some of the posts from Q and stuff. And (laughs) and I see him with his new girlfriend. (laughs) And I was like, are you serious? Right. And so I I took a picture of it and I I sent it to him. I said, needed a word, huh? (laughs) And he goes, yep. He goes, you busted me. And so whenever I had finished prophesying over him and talking to him, he says, yep, that was completely right on. That was exactly um, what it, what I was asking God about. And, and so in, in all areas, not just that. And then, yeah, so another friend of mine uh, from Florida, he, he contacts me and says, um, I've been talking to God and I just want to confirm that what I'm hearing is, is what God's saying. And I'm like, no pressure, right? I mean... I had three or four people contact me back to back asking me for not just a word of knowledge, but a word of prophecy. Um, Cause a lot of times they're intermingled and I was just like, great God, like, okay, let's, let's do this. And, and so um, I contacted him and said, this is what I believe God's saying. And uh, he messages me back to me and he goes spot on. Thank you. And I was just like, okay. Okay, you know, but I can tell you, I, I I don't have a confidence in within myself to say, oh yes, yes, this is this is exactly right, or oh no no no, I I can tell you, to a certain degree, um, for lack of better words, there's this insecurity because I know it has nothing to do with me or my intellect or or anything I know, and completely to do with the spirit of Christ and Him telling me things and dictating things to me to convey to the person I'm speaking to. And 
so it's it's really amazing how how relationship with God works, and you find that that God loves talking about His children. He absolutely loves talking about His children, and if you just give Him time, and you you're willing to listen, and so this brings me to the first exercise: practice listening to God. So one way to do it is take a recorder, right, on your cell phone. Everybody has voice recorders now, voice memos you can use. And just say, okay, God, talk to me. And if you need to get by yourself, you need to close your eyes, you need to get in your vehicle, your, your quiet place, right, um, do so. But as God's talking to you in your thoughts, begin speaking with your mouth, okay? Don't worry about what you're saying. You could be right on. You could be way off. It, none of that matters. Just begin speaking what you're saying. And when you're done, just, you know, you stop the recording. That's it. And then go back and listen to it. Let God finish saying what he's saying. And then you go back and you listen to it. And you, you start conditioning yourself to operate out of your spirit instead of your flesh. Okay? Another thing that I that I was trained to do um, by a woman of God, an amazing woman of God who is a mentor of mine in Bible school. And what she did is we went to a coffee shop, right? And in this coffee shop, we we did dream interpretation. <laughs> so it's not for everyone. And it, it definitely draws in the new age crowd. And so we're doing dream interpretation. And she calls me over and she's di- discipling this other guy who's a friend of mine. And he's sitting there, and I sit, she'll sit down here. So I sat down here. I mean, sat down there. And she said, okay, there's, you know, several tables over. There's a girl sitting by herself. Um, get a word of knowledge. And I was like, what? Because it was out of nowhere, right? But she was teaching us to trust in what the what God was saying to us, what the Spirit of God is, is saying to us. So I was like, okay, all right. So I sat down. I said, Father, I have no idea what's wrong, what's going on with this this lady. Um, but you know, you, you you know, you know her, you know her life. And then he says, she was abused by her uncle, and she doesn't care to um, make herself look attractive because she doesn't want to be attractive. And it hit me, man. I wanted to cry. Even talking about it now, I wanted to cry. Um, Because God's revealing the very heart of the person to me, right? And so I I message. I I look over and I wave my hand. And she comes back over and she goes, goes, you got it? I said, yeah, I believe I got it. And I said, I believe this is what God said. And she goes, yep, that's exactly right. And then she goes and sits down and interprets the girl's dream. And God begins to go to work doing surgery on this on this young lady's heart. And I'm telling you, it it really um, freaked me out because I began to realize how much God cares for people. And he shares things with you, not so you can go blab them about, but... And the reason I'm sharing this with you is, is for a teaching purpose. It, but it's it's so that you can do something about it. You, you could either pray. A lot of times God wants you to talk to people about things. Uh, because they think that it's hidden. Nobody knows about it. Nobody knows what's really going on. And God's like, um, hello, I do. Go look up Hebrews 4.13. We're, we're exposed. We're naked before his eyes. He sees everything. There's nothing hidden. Everything's visible to him. Our very hearts are visible to him. And so it was very interesting because the more I, I've stepped into this, the more we've seen God just do absolutely amazing things in people. So I started training some people in this because they were like oh, I, I, I don't know if I believe you right <laughs> and so after we went to the hospitals and they saw everybody healed in the hospitals they're like okay there might be something to this 
And so we go to the streets, and one of the guys goes, I want to ask God for a word of knowledge. I said, go for it. So he sees this guy. He talks to this guy. This guy doesn't want anything to do with him, right, because he's Hindu. And he knows that we're Christian and doesn't want, he's like, nope, 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 nope. He goes, really? He goes, weren't you just complaining to God about a pain in your knee? And the guy just looked at him like, what? Well, how do you know that? He goes, because God, real God, he, he heard you. He, he knows what's going on in your body. So if he told me, don't you think he wants to heal you? And the guy's like, wow. And so he had to talk him into it. But he laid hands on the guy. The guy gets healed. And so we asked him where we can go to, to pray for people. And they sent us to the Hindu temple. <laughs> so I've told you straight out of the book of Acts, right? <laughs> so we end up going to the Hindu temple, praying for people outside the Hindu temple. We're seeing everybody healed, right? And then it was just funny because we end up basically, um, a crowd is getting um, all risen against us and everything and uh, I wanted to stay and they said nope you gotta go if, if you're in an altercation here they'll never let you back into the country so it's better if, for us who live here to deal with this we need you to come back and teach us and train us I said okay fair enough so they were gone for two hours or slightly over two hours and it was 120 or so people gathered around them and I can't remember the exact number of people they brought to them. But they said, well, if your God's real, then he'll heal this person. Right? And they pray for him to get healed. And it was, it was somewhere between 40 to 60 people. Right? And so they're all getting healed. <laughs> so there was this amazing thing, right? Because we, we had just been to the hospitals. We've been seeing God's nature heal entire hospital wards, um, which was amazing. But getting back to words of knowledge, all of that started because of a word of knowledge. God was revealing a word. And through that word, we begin, you know, able to operate in certain things. So understand, God's always speaking, we're not always listening. So the, the one thing we have to do is make a habit of listening to God. You know, if you were on earlier, you would heard what I was sharing, that we have a perfect relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So it's not something for us to earn. And so all we have to do is, is walk in it, just like Adam and Eve did before the fall. Let's walk in the, re the perfect relationship we have with God. So you ask him a question, expect him to answer. That simple. Don't try to listen. Listen. There's a difference. Just listen. So, let me, I forget, I have to use this light to help light up my face. So, let's, let's cover the first one. So, sometimes God tells you some things ahead of time. So, sometimes I'll look over at a person and immediately God starts telling me about them, right? So, he's prepping me to go and speak to this person. Or maybe they step into the healing line or a ministry line or or I happen to be able to sit with them at lunch or, or something like that. Like God always creates an opportunity for you to deliver a word. And you'll see that the word is always to build up. And sometimes it's not nice. Okay. So I was in Germany and there was this lady. And it was, it was, it was pretty funny because this lady, she was like, well, I just want, I just want you to, to prophesy over me. I just want you to bless me. And I just looked at her and go, that's not true. Because God told me, this is what she wants. And so when she came up and, she, and I told her it's not true, she looked at me like, what? I go, you're really here because you want this. And she's like, doesn't say anything. She starts biting her lip and says, is that true? And she goes, yes, it's true. I said, okay. Now you're being honest with God. So let's, let's go ahead and let's pray. So we prayed, uh, prophesied over her. And she was just like, um, I knew at some point I had lost her because she wouldn't pay attention to me anymore, right? So the next, next time I see her, she was like, well, 
um, I need prayer for for this thing. And I was, I felt so bad for her just because, like, God tells me, nope, that's not true either. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, you want me to get after this girl a second time? I don't even know. She can think I'm just, like, you know, mad at her or something. I don't know. And uh, I'm like, well, God, this is what you're saying, so I'm going to say it. So I said it, and she looked at me. I go, is that not true? And she goes, yes, it's true. I said, okay. Well, you know better. So I'm not going to pray for you. And she was like, mm, you know. <laughs> and I, I was like, I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm just sharing with you exactly what God's saying. You already know what to do, but you're you're trying to get weasel out of it, basically. And that's not okay. And so you find that God will tell you things ahead of time. So when you come into interaction with the person, you there's already things ready. There's There's things there. Right, so there's sometimes where God just wants you to open your mouth, right? This is number two. You just need to open your mouth. We think because we can get comfortable in number one, where God tells us, and then we begin speaking, right? But then that's not really trusting, is it? I mean, it is, but it isn't because when you have nothing, nothing to go off of, nothing to rely on. Nothing intellectually for you to put together to deliver, then it's all completely in trust in Him, right? So you have to completely trust Him that whatever is coming out of your mouth is correct and it's going straight to the person. And so, have I been in this situation before? Yes, tons of times, thousands of times even. And I can tell you, it. It doesn't get any more comfortable than the awkwardness that you stepped into. <laughs> and so we're in this prayer line and this person comes in and said, well, I, I want a word. I said, okay. I got nothing. I'm like, God, what do you want to say? Nothing. But I know. It says, open your mouth. So I opened my mouth. And I said, God just wants you to know. And then as soon as I said that, boom, everything started coming out. And then the next person, nothing. I'm tired. I'm I'm drained. I'm just like, God, I just want this line to end. I'm just being honest. There was like a thousand people there. And all our team had over a hundred people in each of their lines. And my line never, never ended. It was like, as soon as it got short, more people were jumping in line. And I was just like, are you kidding me? And they were telling us, we have to be out of here at a certain time. And I'm like, I'm trying to hurry. But all these people are asking me to prophesy over them. We prayed over people who had, like, um, cancers and stuff. We saw all that healed. I mean, it, amazing, amazing stuff. God just, he's healer. He's amazing. And so we're prophesying. And I'm trying to be quick. I'm trying to be to the point, right? And some things you just can't rush God in. Because he's, he's doing surgery in people's hearts. He's 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 touching their lives. He's He's revealing paradigms. He's... He's doing all kinds of stuff. And um, so I have all these people in front of me. And none of them do I have a word for. Right? And so God's having to give me words of knowledge as I'm speaking to them. He begins to reveal what's actually the issue. Why they're actually there. There was a lady. I go, you're not here um, for for a blessing, as in a prophecy, you're here because you want to have a child. And she said, yes, that's correct. I said, okay, let's pray for you to have a child. I go, you're married, right? We have to ask that question because you wouldn't believe how many people want to have a child out of wedlock. And so, yeah, not going there. And so, so basically, you know, constantly going through and doing that. And I had another guy at the very end, um, the guy who runs the whole meeting, Right, the three churches that came together at midnight and they do prayer for the city. They pr- they pray for the country, and um, that's why there's a thousand about a thousand people there. And he's like, "Well, I want prayer. Um, I just I just want you to bless me." I go, "Uh, that's not completely true." And he's like, "What?" I go, "Yeah, it's not true." I go, "You have an issue with your back, and in fact, you were diagnosed with something you haven't told anybody about." And he looked at me and his eyes got real big and he goes, that is true. 
I said, well, let's pray. Let's kick this thing off of you. We pray for him. The guy gets completely touched by Jesus. The sickness leaves him. He's touching his toes. He's doing stuff he couldn't do before. And then I said, okay, now it's time to prophesy over you. And then he began prophesying over him. And you begin to see that all these things, it, it has to be done with the motive of love. It has to be done with the motive of love. If it's done any other way, it's going to hurt. It's going to damage. It's going to it's going to create chaos and areas. You don't want that. The best way to do it is just just love, just love the person, and deliver it tenderly, D- deliver it in love, and understand. Sometimes it's tough love, right? <laughs> but in in this instance, it was just complete love for him. Just just like, look, I'm not here to shame you. I'm not here to. To, to upset you or harm you in any way I'm just here to share what Jesus says right and so the third one and I'll finish with this is that God will have you prime the pump yes he will have you prime the pump when you go to speak to someone sometimes you have nothing but you have his word his written word already and you begin to pronounce his written word over people Like you are blessed. You're blessed standing up and you're blessed sitting down. You're blessed coming in. You're blessed coming out. You are blessed in the field. You're blessed in the city. Everywhere you go is blessed. All you're doing is quoting scripture over them. Even if it's Old Testament. Is it true in the New Testament? Yes. It says you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing and heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So therefore, still true. (laughs) Right? (laughs) And so, and all of a sudden... Boom, God just starts giving you details about their life and he begins sharing it with them. I, I've had this done. I've seen this tons of times, lots of times. And I can tell you, we were in Brazil in uh, Campinas in Sao Paulo, the state of Sao Paulo. And there's this girl and she's just she just finished sharing what she was sharing. And God tells me to prophesy to her. And I'm like, prophesy to her? I don't even know what to say because I thought I was here to see her healed. You know, and the real issue was it wasn't in her body, it was in her heart. And so God had me prophesy to her and I got words of knowledge concerning her prayer life. I got words of knowledge according to uh, situations and places where she was and and things that she had. I mean, I can tell you, getting words of knowledge, even about the color and the design on people's prayer journals and, and different stuff like that. I mean, just God just showing off and, and just showing people how much he cares for them and so after we finished prophesying and all these words and knowledge I even told her I can see that you know you love butterflies I can see your logo I can see how it's it's very flowery even and this and she's like bawling she's just bawling and I'm just like all I'm telling you is what I'm seeing you know she's like you don't know me how in the world do you know all this and I was like, I'm just telling you what God's telling me. So all of this was complete word of knowledge, but I'm prophesying to her and also showing to her, showing God is showing to her what he's saying about her in her future and where she's at and where she's going. And so it's just amazing, amazing. So I want to challenge you this week um, in the next several days, because I'm probably going to come on Sunday again and, and give talk about words of wisdom and diving into that one because that one's one of my favorites and um but i want you to challenge you go to a coffee shop this week find find somewhere where you can you can just sit and ask god about people and i mean some people they, they can you can be very bold um i i suggest uh so unless okay there's different types of people right some people they can just be bold and they'll just say something and they're wrong and they're like, ah, okay. And they just shake it off, right? But if you're one of those people that says something and it's wrong and then you beat yourself up for it and you shrink back into your shell, then don't do it, okay? What I suggest is by, let's say you're sitting down, you see a lady in a yellow shirt and God tells you that um, she's very insecure, that she's she's looking for attention. And maybe she's not dressed appropriately, and you're like, she's, she's looking for attention in all the wrong ways. And so now you have to go over there and strike up a conversation with this lady, right? Not that you're, if, if you're a male or female, 
whatever, right? So you, you go over and say, excuse me, ma'am. I was, I was sitting there, and I believe God wanted me to share with you how precious you are to him. And it's like, well, how did you get that from there? Well, it's very simple. Just because God revealed the problem doesn't mean that you speak the problem. You bring the solution. You be the gospel. You bring the good news of Jesus Christ. Right? And and so I can tell you what I would have done. I would have gone over and depending on the situation or what's going on, um, just an instance that happened, um, I saw this lady and I went over and I said, look, you you have to forgive those people who hurt you. God didn't let those people hurt you. Those are bad people that hurt you and abused you. Even until your last relationship that you recently divorced. And she just looked at me and she, she welled up and she just started crying. Right? And so I'm like, okay. So God says, all right, switch gears. Now you're going to tell her what I'm giving her. So I said, God said he's giving you a new heart. He's, he's, he's giving you a heart that, of, of forgiveness. He's giving you a heart that's free from bitterness and resentment and shame. And, and I'm just telling her this. And she's just bawling and bawling. And she had something physically wrong with her too. And after we finished praying, she was completely healed. Or after I finished prophesying to her, should I say, um, completely healed. And we didn't pray healing over her. It was just prophecy. It was just God healing her heart and manifesting her body. And so it just simply amazing... I mean, I got tons and tons of these stories of just the goodness of God. And I just want to thank you for jumping on and, and uh, joining us tonight as we talk about words of knowledge. And there's much more we can get into. But I can tell you, the bottom line is deciding within yourself to surrender and then stepping out in it so that you can, so people can, so people, so people can benefit from your surrender, right? Because you're bringing the good news. You're bringing exactly what they need to hear in that moment. And, and a lot of times these people who God begins giving you words of knowledge from, they had just prayed. They had just prayed, God, I need someone to pray for me. I need some help. Send someone to me. They had just said that. And boom, your walking word of knowledge. And it's simple. Don't make it complicated. You just, just keep it simple. And you'll see his word will start coming out. And you'll start delivering it. And it'll just it's going to be simply amazing. So I challenge you, next couple of days, set a time, set a place, start doing it to yourself, right? Start recording what God says or writing it down and then find a place where you can just go and sit and just talk to God about people, all right? Well, bless you. Thank you for joining and have a wonderful night.